Hi, Natasha. How are you doing? Hi, Paul. Great to see you. You've got powder behind your head. <laughs> yeah, it's because I've been talking about active pharmaceutical ingredients today. Oh, so some are active and some are not so active? Yeah. Basically, <laughs> um, so the, the active ingredient is the one that makes you better. Um, and you can see the bottom tablets that have been formed. Some yellow one. Obviously, they're not all one batch or something. Um, but basically, the, the active ingredient is the bit that improves your health. And then you have to, in general, you have to put something else with it to make it stay together. Um, and those are the called excipients. Um, and if it's a tablet, you can you can do direct compression. You can put that into an actual tablet, um, and you might put some around the top of it. If it if it like for example, if it tastes horrible, you coat it so that people make it so it's more palatable. Um, otherwise, no more cod liver oil. Sorry. No more cod liver oil. <laughs> That's right. No more cod liver oil. That's why we have capsules around the outside of it. <laughs> That's, that's a really good example, actually, because it, it does taste horrible and people just used to take it by the spoonful, didn't they? And, um, Modern innovation. I love it. Yes. Uh, and then you, you, you've got the option of putting it into um, capsules is the other way. So you mask it with the capsule. Um, some people just use the straight active, but the other thing you've got to consider is flow rate. So when you... Um, when you try to fill a capsule, um, it can it can all like gunk up together in the machine as it tries to go down the chute, uh, and that's when you add um, additional um, excipients that um, fluidize the um, blend and allow it to actually go to the right amount into the um, into the capsule. It's it's interesting to me. And it's yes. the people that are in the know and, and some other people <laughs> like it as well. What and I have learned something new today. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that. You're welcome. What I was talking about today was the, the impact of Brexit on the, on the supply chain. Um, because, of course, we've only just got through Brexit and uh, everybody's thinking, well, what happens now? Um, right. There's a there's an outline agreement in place, um, but it's going to take time. It's going to take time to stabilize, and even when it does, there's there's more administration going to be needed. There's different administration. Um, there's going to be more complexity, and I, it actually is one of the things that I quite like helping people with. So when you've got your pharmaceutical products and you want to place it on the market, you you want to start by thinking about where it's coming from where's all your bits and pieces coming from where's your your components where's your materials that go into your product how are you going to get it into the primary packaging secondary packaging so paul it's kind of like all the powder behind you and you've got to figure out how to bring it all together in one nice little pill that people can take that's right yeah yeah <laughs> it is and it was cod liver oil <laughs> <laughs> I like the I like the powder version better because it, it's more common. Mm. Um, so the the largest proportion of of products on the market are tablet form. So as a qualified person, you have to understand the manufacture of tablets. Got it. Because if not, you're going to struggle to get into mainstream manufacturing. Um, and there's. So how does this whole Brexit with the supply chain and all of the powder that has to be condensed into a little pill form? I mean, what does that mean for pharmaceutical today? Well, Brexit means it's going to be more complicated. It means that you're going to have more, um, more visits to your suppliers. Uh, you're going to have more documentation. You're going to have delays in shipments um, because because they're going through customs when you're as one market is quick when you're in a separate market there's there's a higher risk it's going to get stopped um, you have to make sure you have the right forms um, they've changed the forms and the content that needs to go on the forms so um i don't super know do you, sorry super disruption and supply chain 
Do you have DPD, the courier? Uh, no, no. Uh -uh. We've got like DHL, we've got FedEx, we've got UPS, we've got a few others, but yeah. not that one. DPD have just stopped um, accepting shipments into Europe um, because they're getting 20% failure rate because people are not doing the documentation properly. Wow. Simple um, stuff always gets in the way, doesn't it? Mm. The documentation is always, um, I would say documentation is the core of the business. It's the core of the pharmaceutical business and the quality management system has to be right. And if you've got the right people in the right place that create the documentation system, all the right procedures, the, the forms, the records that actually flow with your process, then at the end of it, you're going to get a really good outcome. But if you've got somebody that's maybe not so clear with their understanding of what's needed, then you get the same as what DPD has got. You get delays. Um, you get content that's not been filled in right. You get forms that have to be maybe corrected. You get deviations for things that have been done wrong completely because they didn't understand what they were supposed to be doing. You get all your powder and your ingredients all over the place and they're not cohering. Yeah. 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 It's the same sort of thing. It's like, it's like getting your formulation wrong. Yes. Yeah. That's a good thing. People have you to figure some of that stuff out and make sure that they're on track with it. Yes, it takes, um, it's interesting actually. I quite enjoy it. Uh, making sure that you get the, the process mapping right in the first place. Making yeah. sure that you actually target the outcome that you want and don't just sling something together to, to say, yeah, that to the inspector, that's what you want. Um, Throw it together, what's the worst that can happen, right? <laughs> yeah, it all goes wrong. <laughs> Wow. Yeah, that's a lot to, that's a, I mean, a 20% failure rate, not good. Mm -mm. No. I mean, that's delaying so much and disrupting commerce incredibly. Well, and then you've got to consider that truck that went, gets sent back with the product and it has to go again. So you've got your 20% failure, but it also needs to, that 20% is going a second time. Yeah. Um, so that takes away the extra capacity that could be used for another 20%. Yeah. That's well, plus the cost of doing that. I mean, the time, the energy, the manpower, um, all of that, not good. Well, I think that's why they've pulled out of it until it gets sorted. Right. Yeah. Makes sense. All right, Paul, last thought. Last thought. I like the picture behind us. <laughs> I, like the I like the thought of having the opportunity for new chemical entities and new opportunities. And I like that because I, I like the thought of me, things moving forward and improving in the same way that they do when you work on your quality system. Process improvement. That's my thought. For the soil to little pills that you can take that do you good without resistance. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thanks, Natasha. That's Paul Palmer and Natasha Todorovic Cowan. I'll talk to you again soon.